In Band of Brothers, HBO has created the most definitive depiction of the Second World War ever made for the small screen. With a new Blu-ray release, the miniseries helps to deliver even more for fans to appreciate. But is the extra helping of features worth shelling out high def type dollars? Band of Brothers follows the World War II exploits of Easy Company of the 101st Airborne Division as they land in Europe on D-Day. It's one of those, I don't know how to explain it simply, most compelling things I've ever seen put to film involving soldiers fighting. Yeah, I mean, it's a really comprehensive uh, look at, uh, well, one division of, of the Army, starting from their recruitment days, uh, you know, where they trained uh, Kurahi, and then going on from there throughout all of their travels from, from D-Day all the way up until Victory, until actually after Victory Day. Um, I think it goes all the way just after vi Victory in, in Japan. And, and throughout the whole thing, we, had, we were actually talking to the actual members of Easy Company and having them reflect on their... their their experiences. And there was a ridge with the tree line. We were dug in on that ridge. Germans knew right where we were, and they really gave us a shellacking. Find the cover! Find the box! Come on, take cover! Take cover! Come on, find the cover! The one thing that I was not prepared for when I saw this was the attention to detail. After seeing Saving Private Ryan and the Battle of Normandy and landing on the beach there, I was completely blown away at the scale of what can be accomplished. I was not expecting that sort of thing to be brought to the television screen with HBO, because I thought TV miniseries about war, it'll be interesting, be more character driven, the battles will be more implied as opposed to seen. I was completely wrong. The detail in this is phenomenal. It was, I found it to be more compelling than Saving Private Ryan, and I was engrossed into a level that I didn't think was possible in a miniseries. Yeah, it's, it is very important to point out that, yeah, the, the roots of this series comes from Saving Private Ryan. Tom Hanks and Spielberg, when they were done Private Ryan, they really felt that they had uh, they accomplished something great. They had a lot of resources at their disposal. They realized what they could accomplish, so they decided to keep pushing on and do this miniseries. This series really reinforces for me that uh, movies and, and shows and, and, and stories about World War II I think will always be more compelling uh, than stories about Vietnam simply because sort of there's this impression that Vietnam might have been a, it's a social experiment. There was a lot of more social objection to it, whereas World War II has always been seen as this sort of noble war uh, they were coming to help other people, to save other people. Uh, so yeah, th there's, there's, a, there's a kind of a poetic uh, justice that follows all the way through this as, as it's told by the, the people who are participating. And the other great thing is the casting of the show. They didn't get a lot of A-list celebrities or people that you would be recognized off the bat. A lot of people you kind of recognize from here and there and they might seem familiar, but generally across the board they were more or less unknown. So you didn't really get worried about, oh, is that you know, does that, like when David Schwimmer was in it, you kind of, oh, it was Ross from Friends for a while, and then you kind of get out of it, but for the rest of the characters, like, you don't know who they are. They are the character that you're being told that they are, the person they're portraying from Easy Company. Private Picante, have you been blousing your trousers over your boots like a paratrooper? No, sir. That explained the creases at the bottom. Yeah, these guys are unknowns. Maybe they're going to stick around. Maybe they won't. Maybe they'll die in action. Maybe they won't. And so as we're shifting back and forth from present day, when we're talking to the actual soldiers who were there, um, it doesn't identify who any of them actually are. So it's not until you reach the end of the entire series that you realize who was who, and therefore you're in, like, not until you know who's made it through that you know who everybody was. Which, I have to give them credit, was the most brilliant device they could have done. Because after watching the series, like I just tucked into this and went through all episodes in a row pretty much over a couple days. And then I get to the end and the guys are talking and it starts telling you who they are. I couldn't handle it anymore. I was sitting on my couch just bawling my eyes out thinking about what these guys had to go through and I'm like, this is ridiculous. I watch a lot of shit. I don't usually cry when I watch movies and this just absolutely destroyed me, which made it that much better. Yeah, the whole the whole episode that deals with Karen Tan uh, was also very emotional. The, just the way that they were talking about how devastating it was to all of them, both both physically and emotionally. Uh, I mean, that real there's that real feeling in there. They put that emotion directly in there, and you and you definitely feel it. Um, you know, these interviews that they do with these soldiers, um, within the Blu-ray release, this new Blu-ray release they've just done, they have a new feature where you can actually have them 
talking during the feature, and they actually pop up and they can, they're sharing some of their stories, uh, just to add a little bit more, because there's more stuff than them what they were mentioning in the original episode, so it sort of fills it out a little bit more for those who want a little bit more of a reference of what was going on. I mean, because it's it's fantastic. I mean, I, I mean, I already do own the the, the DVD version of this. Uh, the Blu-ray it offers a little bit extra. Um, I, I don't know, if, based on how they shoot it, and it's kind of grainy. It's kind of a, a, a sort of the style of how it's shot and how it looks. If the 1080p is really a necessary part of it. That is not even an argument for me. It always looks better in 1080p or 1080i on an HD TV. I'm not going to ever turn away a show because it's on Blu-ray. It just looks better, it sounds better, better features, more features, all around the board. It's definitely something I'm gonna get for my collection.